Hey guys, welcome back to another video with Steve, and we're going to be talking about Last of Us Episode 1. So, lots of notes, let's get right into it. The show opens up, the talk show, and it basically breaks down what happens if the fungi jump to humans, and why, like the planet getting warmer. And it's actually played by the guy who played uh, the mummy guy, or the brother in The Mummy. And he's great. Uh, so I, it was really cool to see him in something else. I thought that whole scene was really well done. The dialogue was also haunting. I really liked how he said everything. I really appreciate all of the visual storytelling from like simple little bumper sticker that shows that Joel is a veteran. He's got combat experience. He knows what he's doing. Stuff like that. And then there's also like the dog whining at the grandma because there's something off. Lots of little things. If you keep your eye open, you'll see a lot more. It's really, really good. I, the attention to detail really needed to be done with this like transition from video game to show or movie or whatever they were going to do. And I think that they really, I mean, just off the this episode, they really nailed it. And we're going to get more into it. So since we were talking about the grandma, that scene is actually pretty damn creepy. Uh, Sarah's like looking for a movie and... Like, while she's doing that, you see the grandma do some creepy stuff in the background, but there's no jump scare sound or any, like, cliche horror movie trope that really ruins the scene. And it actually transitions right into the next one perfectly. It's so natural. And I really appreciated that. I really did. Now, there was some, no like, noticeable added scenes, but they really blend in. Whatever they have been adding in really works. And I appreciate the little touches, you know, like just it's like filling in cracks without breaking it. You know, it's really good. And since they are being really accurate, they also kept some lines like Sarah's <laughs> I sell drugs, hardcore drugs line was ripped straight from the game. And I appreciated the hell out of that because that's that's a memorable ass line, you know, and for even if somebody hasn't played past the beginning of the game, they know these lines. They know how exciting and how horrific and tragic the beginning is and it, it gets it gets brutal now even with more accuracy like when they're in the car ride and stuff and you're able to like look around in the game there's they pulled like god it's like almost one for one sometimes when they're passing the burning house and then when they're in the street and then the plane comes out it's like it's crazy dude it's it's completely crazy and it feels right it's done beautifully none of the emotion is lost all of the weight is felt. I mean, I was watching it just like anxious as hell and I know what's going to happen. So when you can do something like that, I think, you know, you got a winner. I think, I think this is going to be a winner, guys. And also on that car ride, there's like people on the side of the road and you start to see the dark side of Joel because he's like, no, we got to keep going. We can't we can't stop for them. It's like I have a daughter, too. And in these real situations, you have to make these hard decisions. You know, it's just how it goes. But you can see where he would in those situations put aside his humanity and just become primal you know as we see him 20 years later and i did also want to say one thing the stunt zombies in the beginning when the outbreak happens very good work they were crashing into crap and like jumping over stuff there was this dude that like leapt over this thing and then like crashed into this mini hallway before he like crashed into this other stuff very good work whoever that is you did great that was that was awesome and well i guess we're at the scene and i'm not gonna lie guys i teared up i did uh the weight was there and i felt everything i mean if you've ever lost somebody even if it's not that tragic or horrible you still know that vacuum that happens inside your chest that pain and i think it was done i mean it's it's horrible but it was beautiful you know i that this is the scene you can't fuck up and they didn't and i i love you guys for it you did great i mean i, I teared up i felt it i mean it's just one of those scenes it, it, i mean there's a couple like that even like uh this is a little bit of a tangent but there is another scene that i tear up too and it's it's a it's a lot it's a much sillier movie but it's armageddon with bruce willis and stuff when he sacrifices himself i can't help but tear up i just i don't know what that is but it just gets me every time and uh yeah so there's that the girl who played nova was just fantastic she did great um in fact i felt the live action version when she's dying was a little bit more accurate and more heart tearing than uh, than the video game at some points when she's like jolting around and she's like she can't keep still and it, it's not a pretty death. It's not life isn't pretty. And I think it really showed that. So the scene, that's the scene. And it, it 
it delivered. All right, so now we're 20 years later, and there we follow this little kid in, and he's walking, and I swear to God, dude, when they opened up on Boston, it felt like, you know when you're in, like, a Souls game, if you've ever played, like, a Dark Souls or something, you come out of, like, a cave system, and then you come into that view, or, like, Elden Ring or whatever, it just, like, opens up, and you can, it's, like, all-encompassing. You can see everything and all that. It was, it was really well done, and then the, it also helped that it kind of looked like a castle city with all the walls and stuff. It was really cool. I love that. Oh, and so we even have even more cool visual storytelling from amputees. What they killed the kid. That was super horrible. So you know, you know that they're um, that they're not very cool. You know about infection. They're very ruthless. I mean, it's it's a very ruthless world. I think that's one of the greatest. If I don't know if you could call it a theme. But the brutality of mankind, I always felt through these. Now watching this show, they still nailed it. And it's super important, because I don't know how long it's been since you've played the video game. But you do some really... <laughs> you do some barbaric crap to people sometimes. You really do. And since it's such a brutal world, you know, Joel has to make deals and stuff. You know, he makes a drug deal to try to get back to Tommy. But you don't always know that, because... Blah, 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 and they're they're getting through the story and stuff. I think the pacing of the show and how they're going through the story is really well paced. I think it feels natural and it doesn't feel rushed like a lot of other video game stuff. You know, I think with this TV show was definitely the right way to go. I think you could make a movie out of this, but you don't want the weight of the beginning of the game to be wrapped up in five minutes. You know, you kind you need to let that breathe, but you also can't make that twenty minutes of a movie. You know, because there's so many other characters to meet and storyline to get through and, and literal distances to travel, even though they cut through seasons and stuff. It, it's a lot. So I think that choice was really good. Tess was played amazing. I mean, she's just, you know, she's such a great character and you need someone tough, but like with that softness behind them, you know, because as hard as this world is, there is the softness behind closed doors, you know. And Joel is not a statue. He's very much a human. He's a broken man. Tess fills that void. And they have this real love in a world where there's not much of that. And it, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see it transition to film. Or not film, but TV. The loyalty of the story is just super appreciated. I, can, I really can't stress that enough. I mean, the characters are all really well done. Marlene is done. Ellie is great as hell so far i love her she's great if you've ever seen like game of thrones then you'd know that actress from there and she was pretty damn good at that too all right so the practical effects design on the first like infected person that you see is this guy that's like on this wall and stuff and is so realistic looking whoever designed that did really really good work it looks damn near fucking perfect so i gotta say when it comes to the practical effects in the world design from the streets i mean when the bombs are going off it just all looks like the game i don't know how they did it so well i mean it's just this kind of level of detail is unprecedented <laughs> it's, it's just i can't feel like a, a crazy person talking and, and repeating that but it's just i cannot stress to you if you love this game so far it is the most perfect adaption i have ever seen so far I'm, I play a lot of fucking games, so that, that has weight to it. And I've also had a lot of faith in movies like Doom that just weren't... So, like, how did you mess that up? They tried to turn it into some stupid horror movie when it was just supposed to be gun shooting action. You know, stuff like that. I mean, the new Netflix Resident Evil show. What the fuck was that? So, with that being said, something like this is just... Thank you. Because this IP means a lot to people. It's not just a great game. It's a, it's a, it's one of the most perfect stories in a world where most stories are just carbon copied or altered slightly. It feels very natural and original. Oh, okay. So we got to talk about the, the Ellie negotiation uh, scene. God, that was really well done because they don't like each other, Ellie and Joel at the beginning. They really don't. <laughs> They're, that trust has to form. And the bonding really does like th the little bit of bonding that we did get in this episode really went longer and farther than I think they they thought it would. It just, they knew what to take and where to put it and what not to cut out. I mean, you really can't cut out much, if I'm being honest. 
because it's it's one of those stories where kind of everything matters, you know, and if you take something out, then the weight of other things falter and you can't have that. You really can't. And there was also some really good humor. Uh, Marlene made a, a pretty funny ass joke. And I have to admit, I, I chuckled. <laughs> and if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I just wanted to, to talk a little bit about the score. I'm no mus- musician or anything, but I do appreciate the acoustic score and how it just sounds just like the game. You know, I haven't listened to these game songs a thousand times, so I don't know if they're a hundred percent accurate or if they're one to one to it, but it sounds just like the game and, and I dig it. Yeah, it's great. All right. And back to the bonding before we wrap up the episode, there's a scuffle and Joel does something to right a wrong from his past. He didn't do something in the past and it led to ultimate loss. And so he writes that wrong. He goes primal and it just shows that like he's he's so broken that if put in the same position that his body takes over, he's truly broken. And, and you feel that in that scene just the brutality of it hit after hit blood the swollen fist i won't i won't say any more but if you know it you know it. (laughs) all in all guys this first episode was just i'm kind of speechless you know by how great it is you just don't get things like this nowadays i know that sounds like such an old man phrase but you just don't this feels like it was in the right hands by people that knew what the hell they were doing. I mean, the guy who made the Chernobyl show on HBO, I mean, that show was fantastic. It was horrifying seeing people irradiated and you just die. It's fucking horrible. I mean, you melt. You basically turn into goop. It's horrible. And for someone to take that kind of weight and throw it into a show like this, I think is just, I think they just knew what the hell they were doing and they did it. The casting is perfect. I mean, I've seen the other casts I, we haven't even gotten to those episodes, but I can already kind of see that. I mean, Nick Offerman as Bill is just, I never would have thought of that, but it's its perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I mean, Bill's probably my one of my favorite characters next to Joel. He's just like, he's just fucking cutthroat and he's like a fix it man. And he's just, he's a great fucking character. I can't wait till we get to that. If you haven't seen this, guys, if there was ever a reason to buy HBO, this is the time. It's totally worth it. And if you want, you can wait until a few episodes come out and do how, however you want it. But I do totally recommend this. I'm just ecstatic for the next episode, which is weird because it's like I'm ecstatic to be sad <laughs> because this is not the funnest story, but it's a powerful ass one and it's being told correctly. And I couldn't ask for anything more than as a fan. Way to go, guys. Thank you. Really, thank you. I This is... The change we needed in video game adaptions. And I appreciate the hell out of it. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Have a great evening or morning or whatever. And (laughs) bye-bye. Bye-bye.